Hello and a very good evening. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. This is the news tonight with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the latest headlines. In Jammu and Kashmir, biggest army operation underway to rescue 4 lakh people stranded by floods. Death toll touches 200 as rains leave trail of destruction in the state. Supreme Court reserves order on coal block allocations. Companies fear penalties after centre says it's prepared for cancellations. Chinese President Xi Jinping to arrive on the 16th of September. Big investment projects and talks on bilateral issues to be the focus of the visit. Supreme Court rules out fresh elections in Delhi, asked central government to speed up the process of government formation to prevent horse trading. And Dutch investigators present initial report into the MH17 crash, finding state that high-velocity objects broke up the plane from outside. Our top focus on the bulletin tonight. Rescue operations in Jammu and Kashmir continued on war footing to rescue thousands trapped by flood waters. An estimated 4 lakh people are still said to be trapped in Srinagar and South Kashmir. So far, over 40,000 people have been rescued. Close to 200 people have been killed in the state's worst floods in 60 years. Here's a detailed report. multi-agency rescue efforts are underway in Jammu and Kashmir to rescue lakhs of people trapped in flood-ravaged areas. On Tuesday, rescue teams focused on Srinagar and South Kashmir area, where an estimated 4 lakh people are believed to be trapped. Two more units of Army and NDRF have been airdropped in Udhampur where 30 people are missing after a landslide hit the area. Pura gaun, which was about 22 houses, was the whole gaun that was a slide due to the slide. Malwe debris came down. And in this case, there were about 13 people who were saved. The rest of the figure is 38. In which we have recovered 7 people's dead bodies. And some of the cut organs and amputated parts are also found. With the weather clearing, 61 Air Force choppers and transport aircraft have made non-stop sorties through the night and this morning to carry men, equipment like boats and cutters and relief material including medicine and bottled water. आज आर्मी ने रेस्क्यू करके निकाला उन्होंने हेलीकॉप्टर से पहले हमें हेल्प किया रेस्क्यू किया और फिर यहाँ पर अपने क्राफ्ट से हमें दिल्ली भेज रहे हैं वो लोग तो इट्स रियली आर्मी हैज डन रियली वंडरफुल जॉब हम राजबाग में होटल मैनेजमेंट कॉलेज में फंसे हुए थे पहले थोड़ा थोड़ा पानी आ रहा था फिर पानी देखते देखते बीस बाईस फुट पड़ गया फिर हमें खतरा लग रहा था फिर हमने कॉलेज की छत को उखाड़ दिया फिर जाके छत पे बैठ गए फिर एक हेलीकॉप्टर आया हमें इसके गया और यहाँ पे ले आया डेली जाना है हमें एज वी स्पीक ऑपरेशन आर स्टिल ऑन इन द वैली इन इन सर्टन केसेज इन सम केसेज वी हैव हैड टू स्लिदर डाउन आर गरुड कमांडोज ऑन टू द रूफ टॉप एंड दे हैड टू dismantle the roof and, and evacuate people who have been struck on the top floor of their houses. Air India has deployed two airplanes for rescue operation. Civil Aviation Ministry has set up a team under Cabinet Secretary to help people in the state. We have come up with a plan that we will put two planes to start with to evacuate the people from Kashmir. And uh, those planes are ready, the crew is ready, the cabin crew is ready. As soon as these people are available at the airport and are ready to be transported, Air India planes will take off. Crucial to the rescue operation, road and telecom links were partially restored on Tuesday. Army said that Jammu and Kashmir National Highway, which links the valley to the rest of the country, has been reopened. BSNL also launched an operation on a war footing with Army and IAF to restore mobile services through satellite network. The situation in the rest of Jammu Belt has stabilized and the focus is now on providing relief material on the ground. With inputs from Pranam Goswami and Rajkumar Rao, Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. 
And for those looking for more information on the flood situation in Jammu and Kashmir, the centre has come out with helpline numbers. Here are the flood control room numbers set up by the government. Meanwhile, floods have also affected southern states like Telangana and Andhra Pradesh as well. Incessant rains have lashed several parts of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh for the last few days. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao reviewed the situation arising out of uh, increasing water levels in Godavari River in different parts of the state. A second warning has been issued at a barrage in East Godavari District. The Met Office has predicted very heavy rainfall in some parts of the region in the next couple of days. It has also predicted very heavy rainfall in Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Goa in the next two days arising fears of floods. Going on now, the Supreme Court on Tuesday reserved its decision to cancel the alleged 218 illegal coal block allocations to a later date. Now, the centre noted that the court's judgment stated the allocations as illegal and arbitrary was a wake-up call for the government. Yasmo. The Supreme Court on Tuesday reserved its verdict in the coal blocks allocation issue. The coal ministry filed an affidavit on Monday, leaving it to the apex court to do what it thought best with the allocations, including cancelling them. Coal Minister Piyush Goyal said the need was to bring in greater transparency. He said, and I quote, It's a wake-up call for all of us. The Supreme Court is hearing the matter as we speak. The accountability and transparency standards throughout the country in every action of the government has to become more transparent, subject to more probity. Unquote. The centre in its affidavit stated that 40 operational blocks and six others from a total of 218 are likely to produce 50 million tonnes of coal next year. But they didn't insist on any particular course of action. The owners, however, are pleading for respite. एक कोई कमेटी बना दी जाए एक एक्सपर्ट कमेटी बना दी जाए और कोई एक जुडिशियल कमेटी बना दी जाए जिनके सामने सब लोग अपनी बात रख सके जाके और ये ये एस्टैब्लिश कर सके कि हम किसी भी गलत में भागीदार नहीं थे बल्कि ये तो गवर्नमेंट की अपनी पॉलिसी थी जिसको कि हम सब मानते रहे हैं कि वो सही पॉलिसी थी बट द पिटिशनर्स इन द कॉज आर आर्ग्यूइंग दैट द एंटायर एलोकेशंस आर फ्रॉडुलेंट एंड शुड बी कैंसिल्ड कोर्ट ने जजमेंट रिजर्व किया है हमें पूरा विश्वास है कि सारे के सारे कोल ब्लॉक कैंस अलॉटमेंट कैंसिल किए जाएंगे और उसके बाद उन्हें ऑक्शन के द्वारा पुनः अलॉटमेंट किया जाएगा द गवर्नमेंट अर्ज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दैट क्विक डिसीजन बाय द कोर्ट विल हेल्प द गवर्नमेंट टू रीअलोकेट कोल ब्लॉक्स इन अ ट्रांसपेरेंट मैनर एंड स्टार्ट प्रोडक्शन the court last month found that the country's decades old method of granting coal mining concessions was illegal the decision has put investments worth billions of dollars at risk and threatened to worsen a national coal shortage in a related development the supreme court also issued notice to the cbi director ranjit sinha on meeting some of the accused in the case bureau report raj sabha tv the government is readying a bill to impose capital punishment on hijackers. The proposed anti-hijacking bill of 2014 will also allow security agencies to shoot down an aircraft that could be used as a missile. The bill is expected to be introduced in the next session of Parliament. Here's a report. Unveiling the 100-day achievements of the Civil Aviation Ministry, Minister Ashok Gajapati Raju is counting on the new anti-hijacking bill to bring aviation security in sync with the present-day reality. The cabinet has prepared a note on the new bill. Piece of legislation has been presented to cabinet, uh, to parliament. Now, when this goes to cabinet and gets cleared, I will, I or my colleague here will introduce the bill in parliament, and we will withdraw the earlier bill. The bill seeks to enlarge the scope of hijacking and empowers agencies to take stern action against people making hoax calls and threats. It enhances the definition of a hijacker. I think a hijacker doesn't have value to human life. So I won't see any reason why we should value the hijacker's life. The Anti-Hijacking Act of 1982 was amended in 1994. The new bill to repeal it is pending in the Rogers Bar since August 2010. The standing committee that examined the bill endorsed capital punishment for conspirators. 
15 years after the horrific Kandahar hijack, the government is now working to incorporate latest global anti-hijack laws and bring the Indian law in line with Beijing protocol of UN body, International Civil Aviation Organization. Listing the other achievements, the Civil Aviation Ministry mentioned Air India joining the Star Alliance at service to Moscow, Rome and Milan and the successful evacuation of 1,361 Indian workers and nine children from Iraq and Libya. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Chinese President Xi Jinping will visit India from the 16th of September. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval arrived in Beijing on Tuesday where he met China's top diplomat Yang Jiechi to finalize arrangements for the visit. President Xi is likely to start his visit with a trip to Vadodara where the state government is expected to sign an agreement for an exclusive industrial zone with China. For this, it has already allotted land in Kurzan Taluk with that will include provisions for residential accommodation for the workers. In addition to his meetings with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, President Xi is also expected to address prominent Indians on the 18th of September. President Xi is coming to coming with a huge trade delegation and is likely to finalize some big-ticket investments. Border issues and the revival of Silk Road projects could also be taken up in the visit. Ahead of the meeting, Chinese Assistant Foreign Minister has assured that China is not looking to contain India by military or any other means. So, 是我们共同发展的任务和维护世界和平与发展的重要的职责。所以呢，我想在当前的中印关系中。Going on now, alarmed over Aam Aadmi Party's allegations of horse trading, the Supreme Court today asked the centre to speed up the process of government formation in Delhi. The court has asked the centre to reply by October 10th. Meanwhile, AAP has levelled fresh charges against the BJP, claiming that the party was in touch with 15 of its MLAs. Here's more. The Supreme Court has asked the centre to speed up the process of government formation in the national capital, which has been under President's rule for the past seven months. The court's observation was made with reference to a video sting operation released by Aam Aadmi Party showing BJP leaders inducing its party MLA with money and perks to support the BJP in Delhi. The court said that horse trading will continue if steps are not taken to ensure government formation. It has asked the centre to reply by October 10th. The centre said that the political process has begun after Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung's recommendations. But AAP expressed its reservations on the matter. Honorable Lieutenant Governor has written a letter in which he has recommended that the party is the biggest party of the Bharatiya Janta Party, so he has invited him to the government. So the Supreme Court was satisfied with those steps. And the court has put it on October 10th and has hoped that it will be resolved before the state will be resolved. The BJP has put it in December लिखित में एलजी साहब को मना किया था कि हमारे पास नंबर्स नहीं है हम सरकार नहीं बना सकते एलजी साहब के पास वही चिट्ठी पड़ी हुई है बीजेपी की बीजेपी ने अभी तक उस चिट्ठी को विड्रॉ नहीं किया है एलजी साहब अपनी तरफ से बीजेपी के लिए कह रहे हैं कि बीजेपी को इनवाइट किया जाए Meanwhile, continuing his tirade against the BJP, Arvind Kejriwal claimed that the party was in touch with 15 AAP MLAs. He threatened to come out with more sting operations. He also said that his party is in touch with the Congress and other parties to prevent the BJP from forming the government. Andolan chedenge, puri Delhi me jayenge, janta ke beech me jayenge, is CD ko dikhayenge janta ko, aur janta ko kahenge ki kis tarah se Bharati Janata Party Delhi ke andar shadyantra rach rahi hai, jantantra ki hatya kar rahi hai, samvidhan ki thajiyan uda rahi hai, aur aam admi party ke MLAs ko kharid furokt karke, sarkar banane ki koshish ki ja rahi hai. However, the Supreme Court turned down Aam Aadmi Party's plea for an order so that elections in Delhi are held along with that of four other states later this year. The court said that the decision should be taken by an appropriate authority. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, it's time for a short break now, but on the other side, the US has hailed the new Iraqi government as a major step towards defeating Islamic State militants. All that and much more on the other side of this very short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, Indian and foreign insurance companies are eyeing a huge business opportunity in India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's initiative to open over 7 crore bank accounts before the next Republic Day seems to have opened up unprecedented prospects for them. But first, the government would have to hike the FDI cap in the insurance sector. The government's efforts to open 7.5 crore no-frill bank accounts could prove to be a big boost for the insurance sector. That's because life and accidental insurance are some of the key benefits that the government wants the underprivileged account holders, especially the other number-linked ones, to have. In this whole uh, game of financial inclusion, uh, insurance is an important building block. Uh, as you would have noticed that even in uh, uh, Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, uh, one of the uh, component of uh, financial inclusion is that all those people who would be opening uh, uh, you know, a bank account will also get an insurance cover. The capital-intensive insurance sector is facing an investment crunch for the last seven to eight years. Successive governments have failed to bring in foreign investors, mainly because of the 26% cap on FDI in the sector. Although experts caution that merely raising the cap to 49% may not address all its problems. The big FDI will not come from uh, these uh, in these sectors. Like insurance... I, you raise, from, you raise the investment limit from 26 to 49, it's fine. I mean, you'll get some maybe 5, 10 proposals, uh, uh, but that won't be the, the big chunk. My sense is a big chunk of FDI will come uh, in infrastructure. A select committee of Rajya Sabha headed by BJP member Dr. Chandan Mitra is working on the insurance amendment bill. The committee has three members from the Congress that has the maximum strength of 68 members in the House. The support of the Congress is crucial to the passage of the bill. Given that, the left and the Trinamool Congress are steadfast in opposing more FDI in the insurance sector. The select committee is expected to submit its report in the upcoming winter session after consulting all stakeholders. Krishna Antripati, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the RBI has clarified that it can name any company management as willful defaulters. Also, group companies of a defaulter can also be termed willful defaulters if they don't honour guarantees given by them. The clarification comes in the wake of non-performing assets or big corporate loan defaults making headlines recently. Last week, United Bank of India declared industrialist Vijay Malia and his uh, now-defunct Kingfisher Airlines were declared willful defaulters. You can watch uh, the special report on Rajya Sabha television on non-performing assets at 10.30 p.m. tonight to get a detailed report on this. Let's now get you all the other national news and updates in our segment nationwide. The Lankan Navy arrested six fishermen including a minor for alleged trespassing on charges of entering into the island's territory while fishing. It is said that the fishermen had violated the international maritime boundary line and were using illegal methods to catch fish. The Navy said that the fishermen together with their trawler would be handed over to the fisheries authorities for legal action. The Serious Fraud Investigation Office submitted its final report on the Sharda scam to the central government on Tuesday. The Corporate Affairs Ministry will look into the report and start prosecution proceedings. The investigation agency questioned many people on the scam, including suspended Trinamool Congress leader Kunal Ghosh. Delhi High Court on Tuesday said e-rickshaws are illegal in the national capital. It said that the ban on their operation will continue till the centre frames rules to regulate them. The bench said what is prohibited under the law can't be permitted. The bench has left it to the parliament and the centre to decide the legislative changes to regulate them. Moving on to some international news now, a preliminary report into the crash of the Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 has ruled out technical fault or the actions of the crew for the disaster. Instead, it is suggested that objects penetrating from outside caused the mishap. Here are the details. High-velocity objects broke up MH17 is the conclusion of Dutch investigators probing the crash of the Malaysia Airlines flight over eastern Ukraine. The Dutch safety board has ruled out technical or human error but says it is too early to say if a missile was fired. The damage observed 
in the forward sections of the aircraft appears to indicate that the aircraft was penetrated by a large number of high any objects from the outside the aircraft. It will take at least uh, almost a year bef before we come to a final report. The report comes just days after a ceasefire backed by Kiev and Moscow came into force on Friday. Kiev and the West have accused pro-Russian separatists of shooting down the plane with a missile supplied by Moscow. Russia has blamed government forces for the attack. And toch moeten we oppassen voor te snel getrokken conclusies. Nederland geeft leiding aan alle onderzoeken. Stap voor stap werken de deskundigen richting onweerlegbare conclusies. The Boeing 777 was blown up mid-air on 17th of July over rebel-held territory in eastern Ukraine, killing all 298 passengers and crew on board. Last week, the Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak said he wanted to send more investigators to gather evidence. The investigators are expected to give a final report by July 2015. Bureau report, Raja Sabha TV. Well, the U.S. has hailed the creation of a new government in Iraq as a major milestone and a crucial step towards defeating the militant group Islamic State. Secretary of State John Kerry said Prime Minister Heather al-Abadi's cabinet had the potential to unite all of Iraq's diverse communities. Here's a report. Iraq's parliament approved a new government headed by Heather al-Abadi as prime minister on Monday night in a bid to rescue Iraq from sectarian strife and rising Arab-Kurdish tensions. Abadi, a Shiite Islamist, included members of Iraq's Shiite majority and its Kurdish and Sunni minorities in his cabinet after Islamic State fighters won territory across the north of the country in August. Adil Abdel Mehdi from the Islamic Supreme Council of Iraq was named oil minister, while Ibrahim Jafari, a former premier, was named foreign minister. Rao Chavez, a Kurd, was named finance minister. No interior or defense minister was named, but Abadi pledged to do so within a week, bringing the cabinet to 37 posts. Iraqis on the streets of Baghdad felt the new government represented little change to the status quo. تم تشكيل الحكومة العراقية الجديدة أو ما تسمى بالكابينة الوزارية في الواقع أن هذه الكابينة هي تكرار أو شيء مستنسخ من الكابينة السابقة لأنها بصراحة هي نفس الوجوه والله الزور قشبين نيما لوي بيشان لوي بيشان قشبين نيما بران لوي إن شاء الله قشبين دابين إن شاء الله إن شاء الله أقر بخود عبتين لوي هابيتن في مانباش Meanwhile, the Americans are hoping the new government can start pulling Iraq back together and provide springboard for a national drive to root out Islamic State militants. Obama and Abadi agreed on the need for the new government to address the aspirations and legitimate grievances of the Iraqi people. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, let's now bring you up to date with the other international news and updates in our segment, Global Buzz. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met uh, United States National Security Advisor Susan Rice on Tuesday in Beijing. Rice is expected to pave the way for a meeting between the presidents of the two countries during the APEC summit United in November. States. Both are expected to exchange views on issues including the Korean Peninsula, Iran's nuclear program, the Middle East, Afghanistan, South Sudan and uh, disease control. South African amputee sprinting star Oscar Pistorius faces a court verdict on Thursday on charges that he deliberately shot dead model girlfriend Riva Steenkamp in 2013. Judge Tokozil Masipa will give her verdict after 41 days of testimony in the Pretoria High Court. Phoenix and Arizona cities are under a state of emergency after a historic amount of rain caused major flooding on Monday. In Arizona, the floods have blocked roads and schools in the area. The National Weather Service recorded nearly three inches of rain by morning. Police have urged residents to stay indoors.
Moving on to some sports news now. Croatia's Marin Cilic overwhelmed his Japanese opponent, Ki Nishikori, to win the US Open men's singles title. Cilic dominated throughout the match. He clinched a straight sets victory to win his first ever Grand Slam trophy. Here's more. Marin Cilic. Nishikori. Among the first-time finalists, it was Croatia's Marin Silic who kept his nerve and emerged the winner at the US Open final on Monday. Marin Silic and Japan's Ki Nishikori walked onto the Arthur Ashe Stadium court under overcast skies. Both men were playing in their first Grand Slam under the watchful eyes of their coaches Goran Ivanisevic and Michael Chang. Nishikori was aiming to become the first Asian to win a Grand Slam title. Silic quickly found his range and had Nishikori on the back foot right from the start. Silic was relentless, hitting 17 aces. He overpowered Nishikori in straight sets 6-3, 6-3, 6-3 to seal the match in an hour and 54 minutes. With this win, Silic becomes the first Croatian to win a Grand Slam title since his coach Goran Ivanisevic won the Wimbledon title in 2001. I mean, it seems completely unreal uh, to be uh, called Grand Slam champion. I uh, was dreaming about this all my life and suddenly in the last uh, four or five days everything started to change. Nishikori found solace in his first appearance in a Grand Slam final. I have to say I was a little bit nervous, a little bit, you know, first final. I mean, even semis, but, uh, you know, very excited these two weeks. Um, you know, I didn't expect nothing coming here. Marin Silic would be savouring the victory as he touched the pinnacle of the sport just a year after serving a doping ban. His victory completes a Grand Slam year that has seen eight different winners of singles titles across the men's and women's games, a first since 1998. Bureau Report, Raj Sabha TV. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this edition of the Bulletin. But before we go, here's a look at a spectacular visual display from a fireworks contest in China. Enjoy. Good night.